It's September 29th, 2021. <clears throat> I just got back from uh, walking Nucci to school. I stopped to speak to NYPD. There were three officers um, at the front, um, and um, I mentioned to them, I asked if I could postulate with them for a minute. They said one of their um, the three were in construction. I said, that's wonderful. I said, let's build this. It's more, it's, it's, it's construction, it's mechanics, it's environmental, it's a whole ball of wax. Um, I said, so we live on something called like a, like the size of a giant rock for lack of a better term. Um, I was like, but in order to get it to move, to have some kind of motion, which you need for other things, for orbit and elliptical, um, you would need power. In order to have power of the size of our, this, what we're living on rock-wise, you'd need something in the nuclear fission category, perhaps. The thing with nuclear fission is, if it doesn't run just so, there is some kind of gaseous venting that could pose a problem. Um, I was like, the reason why I bring this up is that we have, I said, if the venting system was percolating through or matriculating or percolating through the soil um, in, say, a forest area with lots of kindling, it could spontaneously combust and go on fire, could it not? And they're like, well, I don't know, I really hadn't thought of it. I was like, well, no, only because I mentioned it because we're in you know, the, the Cal, the, you have the Caldor fire, or whatever, out west. It's easier, it's an easier spot. I was like, here, it's a little more difficult. I was like, the reason why I mention it here is because last night, after the rain, I was like, um, I smelled by Bell Plaza coming up from the sewer grate a, um, like a sulfur dioxide, like a, um, almost rotten egg smell. I was like, so I, the chemistry mix, I don't know why that is. So right away, he was, uh, one of my, one of the officers was like, um, tell the fire department. I was like, fire department, that's where I, that's, what, thank you. I said, I appreciate that. Um, I said, um, so, uh, I said, and also I had a little burning in my eyes. I was like, they don't really teach about acid rain. But it brought up, uh, I was worried about it because my eyes all out of nowhere were burning. And so I just, and, right, and he's like, definitely fire department. I was like, great. I was like, I have to go home for a little bit. I was like, but when I go for my walk, I'll stop at the fire department. I'll mention it to them. Um, now this morning, because it's September 29th, 2021, I'm watching um, the CBS News. And I noticed a few things on um, the the news this morning, which I want in a succession of like weeding through the stories. During incidents in East New York and Bed Stuy, Brooklyn, a story Queens and on the Upper West Side, two of those five victims are in critical condition. This morning, New York healthcare facilities have started firing and suspending employees after the state's first in the nation vaccine mandate took effect Monday. Governor Hochul says she will. Okay. This, I don't know, that does not look familiar to me. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. I'm counting the faces. And then I have one representative on the field in a governor. But this whole crew over here is telling this one representative that I have on the field that everyone in New York has to get vaccinated, otherwise they'll have no employment anymore in an illegal industry. This is an illegal industry. This is witchcraft. That's witchcraft and modern guerrilla warfare. So I don't understand why there's so many of these representatives accumulating and I only have one at the facility at the time. How did this accumulate in such a large quantity and why is it now using its accumulated power and false authority in order to regulate the people? How did this come about? 
this did not exist in this structure when I first arrived in 1978, but now I'm in century 20, year 21. We'll set up a command center to monitor staff shortages at hospitals, nursing homes, and long-term facilities. The governor promises to increase staffing, in part by using out-of-state and foreign workers. Out-of-state and foreign workers. Now, the last time they had a nurse shortage, they imported from the West Indies such a large number of immigrants into New York City without any governing body that I can tell. I mean, they just hit the Long Island uh, hospitals, and all of a sudden it was like, where did Long Island go? Thousands of the state's nearly 700,000 health care workers remain unvaccinated. Let's this is the other thing. This over here looks like a army rep in some form of cat's pajamas. Um, if this brand of modern guerrilla warfare and biochemical engineer warfare um, is building a king's army in the wrong brand, because it's not the British army, from what I can see, um, how, if you have competing armies, how do you as a civilian protect yourself? I'm just curious, as this just goes on in the background while everybody's busy doing whatever it is that they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's get over to the forecast right now. It is a cool one. Here's a lead. Right, now I'm pausing my video because I got to fast forward. Cool start to now, I know we talked about baby toxins and we talked about poisoning in the food. It's been happening for several years. It's to weed through the population, but it ties into this global expansion where all of our products seem to be coming from the Pacific Coast. Um, there's a story on that as well, which I'll mention, but I will give you the symbology of what they're displaying since I have no way of checking on this myself, which is the really scary point. I know there's a fight between Egyptian, which is your traditionalists, and uh, the Hispaniola. That much I know. First on CBS Mornings, a disturbing new congressional report out later today finds more cases of manufacturers selling baby food with high levels of toxic heavy metals. The report describes dangerous levels of toxins including arsenic, lead, cat... This is... It says U.S. House of Representatives, and this is the symbol that they go by, and they're saying dangerous levels of toxic heavy metals, and here they are. Cadmium and... This has an articulation, so I just want to point that out, that I have an articulation representative representing myself, which would be the Albania... And then the contra is an ancient Greece, which is spelled G-R-E-C-I-A. And mercury in popular baby food products. These are the baby, that one especially. That's what they're trying to knock out, and they're trying to rebrand, which is a problem, which is why they're putting the poison in the food. That's been a known for a while. The toxins can be particularly dangerous. You will not be surprised to babies and toddlers and our consumer investigative course. I'm not getting into the nitty gritty because it's self-explanatory. Founder and CEO of Nature's One, which makes organic baby formula. So to make sure his products are pure, ingredients are tested for heavy metal toxins before they even reach the... The thing about this is it's not supposed to be a third party because the third party was using the wrong matrix and the wrong database um, because, again, it has a alternate agenda to the main factory um, who can test by themselves, which I know is an ongoing debate back and forth as to which way is the better way to go. The building. 
It's constant surveillance and testing and working with our He's suppliers. the one in charge of this the particular plant. Also periodically tested, so Hyman can work to keep toxins like arsenic and lead out of his products. But about 10 years ago, it was a different story. We were the poster child for the first uh, toxins uh, identified in certain ingredients. In 2012, Nature's One made headlines after a university study found... Poster child. They had to pick one example in order to make this theoretical into an actual reality and an example of how are we going to handle this. Arsenic in its organic baby formula. This 2012 event was so shocking because... 2012, that's a Mayan calendar count, baby. These things all tie in with the relevance. We were in this beautiful place in our mind that we we're doing everything possible that we could. He says his company was testing for toxins, but the commercial labs he used couldn't test down to the lower levels in that study. It turned out the arsenic was in an ingredient called brown rice syrup. Customer. Brown rice syrup. B R O W N R I C E. S Y R U P. Customers were furious. You must have lost a lot of business. We went to zero. Zero. Mm -hmm. It was a difficult time. It really was. You're actually cheering up a little bit. Well, it's 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 emotional. Yeah. I'm talking to this guy about home. That he says was Get the more. turning point. Since then, he's dedicated mm -hmm. himself to keeping toxins out. Without a doubt, it's it's hard from the our pilot. All right, hang on. I don't. Just give me a minute to finish this, and then I'll help you. Parts per billion. Subcommittee Chairman Representative Raja Krishnamurthy. I've never even heard of this gentleman. I don't know where he works. Um, I can tell you that that's the pin. Let's see if we get a better shot. No level of toxic heavy metals. It doesn't really have a very good. Um, and exposure to them. Now, on pressure in the atmosphere, I was told I have thyroid disease, and they wanted to give me a pill called Synthroid, and they wanted me to take it from the age 16 for the rest of my life, which I took for a while, and then I finally I'm like, you know what, I'm not taking it anymore. So, um, and I've been fine. So, this thyroid eye disease. Thyroid I eye disease. To hide my bulging eyes. I wear them just about everywhere. Her eyes bulge because of a pressure change in the atmosphere. It is literally like they bulge out and protrude because there's pressure changes between her chemistry intrinsically and the extrinsic, which doesn't seem to be resolving itself and is being mishandled by all sorts of authority tied into the street management, which is why this is a broad picture that I'm trying to weave together with what they've allowed on my tell a vision. But then my doctor recommended Tepeza, a prescription medicine for thyroid eye disease, and I didn't have to hide so much. In a clinical study, more than eight out of 10 patients taking Tepeza had less eye bulging. And nearly oh. seven out of 10 saw improvement. But then didn't have to hide so much. That was the eye bulge. Okay, now this story's about off the port of California Pacific. That's the name that they're, the shipping company's going by. M-A-E-R-S-K. Mayorsk. But I know that that's symbolically something else within the port. And it says log jam at the ports. So it's L-O-G-G-A-M at the ports. And, it, and their, their claim is shipping issues could mean problems with holiday shopping. None of us have money at my level, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Mm -mm. Slowing deliveries to stores and homes nationwide. Those are two facilities that handle about 40% of America's... Now, why are there so many, like... These are all cargo ships with containers. 
why are there so many of them? They're not on the northeast coast. They're on the west coast, is what we call it, by California, which I think is Gavum Newsom. Something nuisance? No, it's Newsome. And Ga Gavin, I think, is his name. I have to... How they, how they tie in the, the English around here sometimes has a two-point articulation. They have an estimated 500,000 shipping containers waiting to be unloaded. Carter Evans shows how the congestion at the West Coast ports could make it harder for you to shop. When buyers with stimulus cash wiped out inventory... Now, they just said buyers with stimulus cash. Now, is California receiving stimulus cash that New York's not? Because we got $1,200, and that's not enough to buy a bicycle. I can't buy a bicycle for 1200 bucks. Besides the fact it's the only money that I had, I wouldn't, you know... You buy a bicycle, I mean, it's ridiculous what they're saying, and then what actually gets uh, installed in the public. We did not have any kind of stimulus cash whatsoever. Tony Yabaka's bike shop last year, he immediately ordered 100 Not enough bikes. to do bikes. Only a handful ever arrived. Where are all the bikes right now? <laughs> Well, I'd imagine some of them are on the ships right out here in San Pedro. The ports of LA and Long Beach are less than two miles from it. San Pedro. These are things we don't really know in New York because it's on the other coast and nobody teaches these things. At least they don't teach them to us. And this says the Bike Palace. From his shop. It's frustrating because you can look down into the harbor and see all the containers that are stacked five, six high. Look at, I mean, like, this is just one. This one, T-A-U-A-X-C-A-I. This one, what is this, Japan, because it's up and down, T-R-I-T-O-N, T-E-X. I mean, usually if it goes one way, but then you have other people going the opposite way, but then you've got... The vertical horizon kiddos, too, that write and ship. On average, they're sitting nearly six days at the port waiting for trucks and nearly 11 and a half days waiting to get loaded on rail. L.A. Port Director Gene Soroka says import shipping from overseas is up 50 per... We definitely don't know his name. They, he's not a household name over here on the East Coast. I didn't even know the name of the ports on the East Coast, because no school teaches this in the um, state of New York. And where else are you supposed to get this information from? Especially when somebody else is building someone else an army and you just don't qualify because of the way you look? Percent this summer, 70 ships are currently waiting a week or more just to get into the port. What is going on here? Is it just that we're buying a lot more stuff? Yeah, the American consumer's buying strength is so strong and epic that we can't absorb all this cargo. Reaching. Buying power. Now, is that all the shit crops that they, like, did in the 50s and 60s that they said they'll send over and then they said, oh, we'll send you some products back? Is that, that what you call buying power? I'm just curious. Because the numbers and the skew is off. And quite frankly, the kiddos here in the United States of America need labor and jobs. They'd rather be manufacturing the products themselves than taking the crap from overseas. Oh, and this is what my new mall looks like. Is What is this? Is this what National Mall Security looks like now? Is this what you're stimulizing? Because I've been to Roosevelt Field, and this is the only thing that looks like it's shopping. Only thing with money in New York. Why is that? I don't have money to go to the mall. But I, when I go to the mall for repair for my computer or whatever, that's what I see walking around in, like, big caravans. Retail sales jumped unexpectedly in August as the Delta variant caused Americans to once again... Delta variant. I've heard the Delta referred to as, like, a Middle Eastern thing. 
Just saying. I don't use it in such a... Um, I don't give them such a high compliment as Delta, but, you know, people take all sorts. They hijack your authority. They hijack your words. They hijack the purpose. And here we are. You know that um, Barat, B-E-R-A-T, is actually a place, not just a goddess, but a place in Albania. My grandfather thoroughly documented it. I know she was also a sun goddess, right? Nut, N-U-T, um, is the goddess that, uh, and then in French it's Nui, N-U-I-T. I'm the same one. Swallow the sun. Um, those are Egyptian gods. Um, I Upstairs, the Colombian uh, that's here, staying with us, um, with the gentleman from the Navy who's a little confused. He says he's Spaniard, Moroccan, which makes him Dominican. I'm like, all right, if that's how the anatomy is calibrated in your Navy, I will pass that along to mine. So that's what I have here, but the Colombian, she's uh, lighter than he. Uh, and, I, and I met a second Colombian who's my angel valet that I speak to outside of the lazy cow. They look like they could be cousins. Um, so she confirmed that she looked it up and it was new. Uh, it was not, she called it nut, N-U-T. Um, and I said, thank you. I said, well, it goes back to Egyptian gods. I was like, and you know, the claim is that that is the symbol for eternal life with Egyptian, ancient Egyptian. But the thing is, is it, it's actually Celtic, C-E-L-T-I-C. -E so if I'm going as a, a lost civilization of Atlantis, yes, I am. And the lost civilization of Italy being the Etruscans, yes, I am one of the lost tribe uh, members. Just so we're clear, Nicole Caterusa, star 1978, star 8378, Earth, Solar System, Milky Way, Universe, Galaxy at the moment is broken. I'm going to continue now with the tell a vision. Once again, change where they spend their money. Less on dining and travel, more on consumer goods like furniture. I just hope that it doesn't disrupt our food supply chain. Nick Vias is a global supply chain expert. He anticipates more. Is he now our global supply chain expert? Why? I see a whole lot of experts <laughs> in the wrong army. Just saying. It's more COVID-related holdups from manufacturers in countries with limited access to a vaccine. We have to have this global participation of labor forces. Who says? Because I say otherwise. No, we do not. Supply side activities, manufacturing, transportation. His people do, so they can keep building their army and they can become quietly dangerous with needles instead of guns because they're such a gentle people. And then they'll bioengineer you off the planet by a keyboard in quiet lab elsewhere. All of these things to work. People have to be immunized. Back in the shop. Did he just say Indianized? Or immunized <laughs> when he says the word my ear <laughs> it's like wait a minute it sounded like he said Indianized <laughs> is that which Indian is that it gets confusing because I don't know that everybody has the same identities anymore Shop, Tony Yamaka stopped taking bike orders because he doesn't know. Sounds like his name's Yamaka. Oh, wait a minute. This is getting confusing. Know when or if they'll arrive. I would say you, if you're interested in giving a bike for Christmas, is a good time to buy it. Because come Christmas rush? Yeah, we're probably not going to have them. For CBS Mornings, I'm Carter Evans in Los Angeles. Carter, thank you. Thank you. Up next, Black California is a pretty scary place, not gonna lie. Today, but first, it is 7:43. Time to check your local weather. We've got crisp, cool conditions out the door. Now look who thinks he has Hispaniola and Egypt in his pocket. Watch this one, Vladimir. Wrong stage name. Time now for what to watch. Let's do things here. You are our international. 
National Man of Mystery. This is a deep tease to a later segment. E tease? I don't have a license to kill, but I got a license for a lot of other things. Okay. <laughs> That's correct, but there are people with that lethal weapon license to kill that don't carry weapons way at the top. I'm just saying. Fishing license. Former President Barack Obama and former First Lady Michelle Obama finally breaking ground for the Obama Presidential Center on Chicago's South Side. Near now this is a problem. L.A. Chicago. Chic. C H I C ago. When it was a benign set of circumstances <laughs> for all these telephonica came up and you increased the speed of the planet breaking and then like you paused the world, you moved it forward and then all of a sudden it became like, wait a minute, no, but we've always had these things. No, you didn't. They just paused your script at non-essential equipment level. They fast forward through some kind of devolutionary system and then they made you like power up like a little robot <laughs> inside where they were at as they progress. It's like that red light, green light, one, two, three. And you're like, red light, green light, one, two, three. And you're like, where are they now? <laughs> some of us have that um, meeting. We get into that kind of meeting at when they break things really bad at the planet. Near their home, the roughly $830 million project will include a museum, a library, community space, and athletic center. Former President Obama says he hopes it will inspire Chicago's youth. Listen. And through this center, we intend to give these young people and those who are coming up behind them whatever training, support, resources, and platforms they need to fully realize their potential. I'm just curious, is that only your people? Because my experience in this life frame has been that with a lot of king business going on in New York and elsewhere in the country, you have not been very kind to my skin color or my genetic akinment and kindred. Just saying. I know that, like, they say they've been oppressed in the inner cities. and what, um, It's your own kind has been oppressing you, not me. I'm just the little lady from another planet that's here for big environmental things. And your fight with each other <laughs> has become really loud, really obnoxious. I really didn't want to get in the middle of it. And I really wanted to just go be married to Nicholas. I think that you lose my purpose in all of your non-essential equipment fights. <laughs> and I really don't want to take part in it. I just want to be safe, not poisoned, and I don't want the pressure to change around my body where I can't even heal or stand upright or that I bloat like a dead carcass while I'm trying to just wait for some form of my help to come for me. So it's been a while since this happened. Um, there's a lot of delays, and mostly because some critics said the project would have displaced black residents in the neighborhood as gentrification took hold, and there was even an advocacy group that... I don't know what this gentrification word means. Is that where, like, these people replace all of my people by brute force and by deregulating and lawsuits and all sorts of stuff and blocking them out and boycotting them with guerrilla warfare tactics. I'm just curious because it seems like there's a lot of gameplay going on and there's a lot of field that has been sacrificed or lost and it's dangerously getting weighted in the wrong direction for planetary balance unsuccessfully sued over the use of the park, which is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. And as you say, look what it will do for the neighborhood. Yeah. That's you the intention. You said it's bringing it to the neighborhood, and that he said he wanted it to be in a place where he, where he and Michelle had a home. Michelle's, where she was born and raised, is there. Nobody gives a shit about him. I'll be honest. 
Nobody gives a shit about where he was born, where they raised their kids. They are just two faces of non-essential equipment that fucked up and fucked us forward and grew the world more dangerous. That's his report card. He's not the only one. There's a whole slew of white before him and after him that have contributed as well. Just so we're clear. There. So it has a lot of sentimental value, but I think he was looking at what good it will do for the community. Yeah, right. Athletic center, community center, yeah. all these programs. Leadership it, training. It's not yeah. going to be a library where you can find Michelle Obama's inauguration gown. He exactly. right. says that that would be cool, but that's not what the intention is. It's what you say, yeah, Gail. Right. Yeah. It's to provide a space yeah. for people in the community. And I understand there's fear and change because there's a lot going on in Chicago. But at the same time, though, given the fact that they are going to provide so much, like you said, from education, athleticism, and everything in between... <laughs> I don't get why they get to reward themselves after they've grown so dangerously. Why is the world allowing them to reward the children for not playing by the correct rules and by hurting so many areas and industry so dangerously? I don't get the reward system here. In 20, 30 years from now, the type of young men and women that they are going to kind of cultivate in that. Right. There's also always, right. there's also always someone at a community meeting who will raise their hand and say, not in my backyard. Right. Right. But, but at the end of the day, it's... That's kind of where I'm at, but I'm talking to the wall because I got no other venue or outlet since I've been pigeonholed into silence and... By myself, and mediocrity. Said, this is where he had his political awakening. Exactly. Yeah, this is where it, this is where it started. This is where it started, and so and it's a focal point. Highly relevant. Now kids right. can see something, yeah, tangible, physical that they can walk into. in that neighborhood. I think most people are very glad it's there. Yeah, I'm right. Right. very glad it's there in the neighborhood. That's right. Uh, yeah. All right, Lori Loughlin oh, is returning to TV yeah. after serving prison time, of course, for her conviction in that notorious college admission scandal. She will bring back her popular character from the Hallmark series, When Calls the Heart. That's what I would have liked to have grown up to have been. When Calls, that's the name of the spinoff. Lachlan will appear in the two-part season premiere that's slated to air in December on a new network called GAC Family. Lachlan last appeared on the Hallmark show in 2019 after she and her husband paid half a million dollars in fraudulent order to get their daughters into the University of Southern California. You know, like I said, welcome back to public life. Good luck with your Aid your desk in society. You know, they were working within a system where this kind of thing was going on. Uh, you know, they would have been extraordinary individuals if they said, no, I'm not going to participate. They did. They paid. They got their lumps. They paid their debt. Now they're back. I mean, they were convicted. So yeah. it's, they've served their time. And no idea what that even means. Something about a college. Again, the when they speak English, it doesn't always articulate out to an understate that actually understands what the whole ruckus was about and what the whole headline was used for. I have no way of tracking it or finding out about it. And now they should be free to reintegrate into society. Yeah, no doubt. Everybody. And she's being welcomed back. So yeah, there you go. Sure. So that's, All right, her daughter's on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. Is that it's right? Is she good? I haven't seen her. <laughs> I just know she's on. She is on it. Yes, Dancing with the Stars. There's some guy last night, Lynn put it on. I had to walk out of the room. It's like, I don't know. It's not like the old dance. <laughs> Everybody get excited. Are you excited? Let me see time. This is my excitement about okay. bears in Katmai's National Park. Check out. Here's the thing. My species is not supposed to bloat up. And I have a second species that they're mentioning this morning with something. with the bear species. Check out these big critters from live stream footage at Katmai. The brown bears really put on some bulk over the last year. This is to bulk, make people B-U-L-K. understand why bears hibernate and how they hibernate. So they put on a little weight, like many of us in the pandemic. Yeah. You can yeah. see the suit is straining. Yeah. You're looking at Holly, one of the bears the rangers tracked. Here she is in July before she put on weight to get ready for hibernation. And here she is now. Let's see Holly now. Woo-hoo. Holly's looking big. You can see why she was crowned the champ back in 2019. If you want to get in on the bracket, you can start voting at fatbearweek.org. I am not on the ballot. I think, I think oh, I'm a fat mayor. I don't know what Fat Bear Week is. It's about mental health. Stay with us. Thank you, Renee. Come on. There's something in the world called a Greta. I don't get to see very often, but they did make a mention of her on this program.
subject of global warming. Of course, we need constructive dialogue, but they've now had 30 years of blah, 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 and where has that led us? I don't know where she exists. I don't know what country. I don't know what venue. I don't know how she got there. They don't teach these things, not even on a television. Now, this is interesting. They mention about mental disease We're stepping away from their for sports stigma. Over their mental health concerns. Nearly 20% of American adults are facing mental health challenges. This morning, you'll hear from three athletes NBA superstar Kevin Love, who has spoken openly about challenges his and to the stigma. Also, six time NFL incorrectly Brandon diagnosed. Back in 2011, he shared that he was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. And WNBA rookie Dee Dee Richards, line who is one of the of athletes speaking up about injuries that go beyond the physical. Richards was temporarily paralyzed during a college practice in 2020, and she says she's still dealing with it emotionally. That is trauma. Partially CNN. paralyzed. All three who want everyone to know that it's okay. It is okay to be vulnerable. When did you feel like being vulnerable was okay? So I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. The best way to describe borderline personality disorder is emotional disorder. Most people who are living with borderline personality disorder, they don't have the skills and tools naturally to be able to cope and, and manage, self-regulate. For me, I had to go through self-assessment to pick up those tools and skills to be able to communicate what I was feeling. I didn't have that naturally. It was just all about reacting, not responding. Now, Kevin, you've said that there was times where you wondered why you were so concerned what other people thought. When did that shift happen? Uh, shift happened probably uh, in 2017. I had to have a, a major moment in my life, a very public, emotional uh, and mental health moment, which was a panic attack uh, on the floor. You ran and you collapsed on the trainer floor. Yep. And from there you tried to gather yourself. You said you thought you were about to die. I thought I was having a cardiac moment, honestly. I mean, the oxygen just, just wasn't going to my brain, my lungs. I just wasn't getting, you know, I was, nothing was alleviating the, the panic that I was feeling. So I actually ended up on, on oxygen after that, went to the Cleveland Clinic, all the tests checked out. So to me, I'm thinking, well, what the hell just happened? I was taught to... They have top of the line to doctors. I don't get that. Think about it, not show weakness. I think as athletes, we can all confide in that and understand that in a way. Yeah, and yeah. you know, it's funny because every few years, I I, I kind of see my, myself. I look in the mirror. I wasn't passing the mirror test. Now I'm doing a little bit better, more comfortable in my own skin. And I can say, hey, listen, if, I, if I'm feeling triggers, if I'm feeling something, I know my tools and what I can go to. You just said something interesting and in what you said was... This is baby you know, corp as far as I'm concerned. I roll my eyes, I'm like... Test then now, sometimes we I get, do like, because is this really helpful for you all? Thing, right? As athletes, we get up every single day. What do we do? We Nobody try, knows because we don't have that lifetime. So. To to jump higher, to run. I have absolutely no patience for these sports junkies considering that I know in certain areas you're supposed to have genetic counseling where before you you know you're allowed to have by area that you live in so many children when you get married and then the, and the marriage process has a really ritual ceremonial akinment or an attunement to it then it's it's put into the zodiac and your children have purpose, and they're built with meaning, and they're they're built, and then they're born into society. So this way it helps the structure of humanity in its entirety. They don't practice that here in America, or North America, under this flag. Um, I've heard the dumb and the useless humans speak of, well, I don't want someone to tell me how many children I can have. Right, yeah, got that. Okay, so that's why you don't get a, a vote. Because there's some people who are having 10 kids, and they're only allowing themselves to have 10 kids in their families, and they're out of balance with the numbers on the planet. And then there's some that say you can only have one child, which I think is what China went with, um, until their numbers equalized out and balanced back out. Um, but the really scary thing is this new uprising in where I am in completely off balance, off kilter, um, 
genetic numbers. So it's like you're just totally outnumbered all of a sudden. And then they become really aggressive in their swarm. Let's call it S-W-A-R-M. If we were in a beehive and you have a swarm that just surrounds you. Um, so the thing is, is that in everything, it's about balance. So I don't have patience for these athletes and these soap stars and, and entertainment people. I'm not one of them. They didn't want me to be one of them. They didn't let me into their community. Fuck you. You don't get a say now because here we are at, I'm at the low of the low being, I'm the actually afflicted with the, I didn't get a, I wasn't born with a sports contract, an athletic parenthood, and a great sense of anything. Um, I didn't have access to really great trainers and coaches in society. I did not have an instrument in my hand and a performing arts contract in the other. I was literally just cast aside while everybody else was doing whatever it is that they do. So the fact that now you've got mental stigmas, personality disorder used to be in other area before this disgusting society of no justice anywhere, um, used to be that you had multiple lifetimes of knowledge. They rescripted that to be something absolutely disgusting. It's no longer honorable. Um, then they said that there's personality disorder, um, myocardial infraction. No, that's not where I'm going with the, um, the cardial timing being off with the myo myelin strands. That would be the last woman who I didn't even give a chance to speak because that's what I've already spoken on it. Um, and the first one... He was that one. Oh, and then the anxiety and the panic. Yeah, the anxiety and the panic of the way that we used to be when we were in control of the statistics, the statisticians, and the matrix and the rubrics that things are being based off of with one reliable source and with the nuclear <laughs> reactor not trying to poison us by air toxins and then poisoning the minds of who's really in charge and everybody's scattering in some large panic disorder. I mean, there's ways to explain this, but I just see heads chopped off and bodies running everywhere in every direction and breaking the system in so many more ways because they've literally broken the elephant down into bite-sized pieces and now they got the bite-sized pieces and they're trying to reconstruct the elephant but the elephant doesn't look like the elephant was born now the elephant looks very freddy krueger like and it looks wrong i'm in bayside station bayside new york 11361 it's earth solar system Milky Way universe galaxy is broken. That's my space address. And I'm in Bayside Station, Bayside, New York, 11361. Not because I want to be here, but because this is where I was initially sent. And Nicholas has not been able to come get me on a permanent basis. Star 1978, Star 8378, Nicole Cateruzzo.